Okay, the, uh, pretty much the only unit uh, or level one and two objective that we didn't hit in the first half of the year was on atomic models. In other words, how do we get to this theory and understanding of atomic structure? So there's lots of support material and notes uh, that you can look at. We're just going to give you a real quick overview here. Uh, some important names would be uh, as follows. John Dalton, uh, probably the first guy to have any intelligent uh, view of what an atom was in modern times in the early 1800s, proposed actually the concept of an atom and pretty much thought of an atom as a little marble, like one of the ones that just rolled out of my head. And J.J. Thompson then expanded on that uh, in the 1890s uh, when he discovered that uh, there are little particles in matter and actually some of them have charge. And he actually uh, came up with the idea here that there are some uh, particles that are negatively charged, and he called them corpuscles. They've now been renamed as electrons. And he thought of matter as this. Must be atoms are so like this pudding, like oatmeal kind of thing, uh, positively charged with negatively charged raisin sort of stuck in there. That's kind of how the model of an atom looked in the, in the 1800s. In fact, in England, where he was doing his work, it was phrased as the plum pudding model. All right. Then along about 1900 or a little after, uh, two fellas, Niels Bohr and Ernie Rutherford, kind of collaborated in coming up with a, a more advanced theory. And that really happened as a result of Rutherford's discovery through a famous experiment that you need to research and study off the CD uh, called the gold foil experiment. And basically, that was the experiment that proved and discovered that there were positively charged particles also in an atom, and that they were actually not just anywhere, but housed or kept in this very dense nucleus. All right, so the discovery of the nucleus and protons was the result of Rutherford's work. And then along with Bohr, they uh, kind of figured that the electrons must be sort of like in a planetary orbit around the nucleus. And that's the, probably the concept that most people drag around in their heads right now. Uh, when they think of atoms, they sort of think of this picture. All right, now we're in, you know, almost 100 years later. There's a little bit better theory out there now, um, and it, it really is called the orbital theory. Uh, not really called the modern theory, but it, we're in modern times here. And that would be to view a nucleus, same as Rutherford did, as a small, dense thing with positively charged protons and neutrally charged neutrons in it, but that the electrons aren't really on these orbits or tracks, sort of like Bohr thought of, but they're really sort of more like in a beehive cluster around the uh, nucleus. And so you kind of can view this as this like frantic activity around the nucleus of these electrons that are just moving at a high rate of speed in what we sometimes call uh, probability regions or orbitals. In other words, there's a probability around the nucleus of finding a certain number of electrons based on the atomic number. And we can't really say exactly where those electrons are, but we know they're in this region of space somewhere called an orbital, and we also know that those electrons are constantly moving within that orbital, so you can't really pinpoint where they are. 